Diego with Max Token, what's up? Okay, so let's do more acronyms, sure. Uh, we get into some technical ones, some of the some of the ones that are like intimidating. It's there's a lot of like math, you know, to it. So um, uh, EVM is one you'll see maybe. EVM is the Ethereum Virtual Machine. So it's um, the Basically, it's, did you see the matrix? Okay, remember in the matrix, when they plug Neo in and they have that like white room and he could get like guns and clothes and all that, it's like a training, the training room in the matrix. That's kind of what the EVM is. It's a, a, a Ethereum virtual machine. And they use that, um, they use that machine to make like apps. They call them D-apps. It's a, a de decentralized application, so like smart contracts, um, and that's that's kind of the the machine that they use to use the, the software Solidity, I think it's what it's called, and the programmers use that programming language in an Ethereum virtual machine to make a smart contract. So again, that supports the whole peerless, peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, trustless uh, uh, nature of smart contracts. You know, I, I don't have to trust you. You don't have to trust me. We just trust the smart contract that's already been programmed and that you can review that will do what it says. If I send you this, you send me that. The smart contract operates that way. So that's kind of the, that's kind of like the software programming language that they use to build these smart contracts is the Ethereum virtual machine. So, and it, th 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 this, it's not something you'll see very much, but when you do, you'll be like, what the hell is that? Okay. Um, the other ones, uh, we'll, we'll do three more. It's the, the, they're called consensus mechanisms. Okay, so d what the blockchain is, is is every little, that's what they will call them a blockchain, is that when you make a transaction, you create a block. Now the next guy makes a transaction, that's a block. The next guy try, makes a transaction, that's a block. You make a block, a chain, and it becomes a chain of blocks, a blockchain. Um, the, the way that, that you have to validate that, the, the way they validate those transactions to make sure that they're real, that somebody's not trying to hack the system, that somebody's not trying to cheat somebody out of something, um, is called a consensus mechanism. That means we all agree that this hash is correct because the, either the smart contract said so or the, the validator says so or wh whatever, whatever um, consensus mechanism you're using has agreed that this is the truth, okay? That's what's really driving for. You don't have to trust anybody. It's, this is not the land of trust anymore. This is the land of truth. You know it's true because the blockchain says so. Um, so the first one is proof of work. POW, you'll see, proof of work. That's what Bitcoin uses. Um, and that basically the, the whole idea of mining, you'll see people talk about mining. And that's these, these high-end computers, these big mega computers, they have them all over the world that they, when somebody does a block, so say I made a block right here, and now that gives me what's called a hash. It gives me a number, it gives me a hexadecimal number inside the hash that says that that's the truth. And so these computers, they, they have to solve uh, uh, basically like a puzzle. They have to solve like a hexadecimal math equation. And then that, that, that uh, block is validated under proof of work. The mining systems, like the, the uh, computers, do that math and say, yes, that's true. And then they get a little reward. So the one that does the, the hash first, when a block is done, the, the, all these computers, they compete. They compete to see who's gonna be the one that uses that device. Um, and they get a little Bitcoin reward for that, okay? And then the next guy, so that now, that's what, that's what makes the blockchain, that's what makes the Bitcoin blockchain trustworthy, uh, that, that you know it's the truth, is because the next, the hash that they do in that block, the next hash has elements of that in it. So you know that that's the next one. So basically it's this, it's just this long math equation that these Bitcoin computers keep doing over and over and over. Um, so that's the proof of work. Now, a lot of people have criticized that because it's a lot of, uh, um, it's a lot of computing power. You know, that you have all these big, huge mega computers that are competing with each other. And you know, that uses a lot of, uh, of, of energy and, and like electricity and things like that. So it's not, it's not green, okay. Um, uh, but it is super solid, trustworthy. It's like, you know, rock solid, you can trust it, okay. Proof of stake, now that's what Ethereum now changed to. September of 2022, Ethereum changed to what's called a proof of stake. It used to be proof of work, now it's proof of stake. And what it is is now you have the computers, instead of doing this, this math, there still is a consensus uh, thing, but you have validators that actually put their Ethereum up, they, they put their stake up 
uh, and then you have five or six different validators that verify that that information is correct inside the inside the blockchain. Then you get the next block, the next block, the next block, and so you use the computers are more, the, the, the computing system out there is not doing this, it's not a big competition to see who can do the math problem first, um, but they're using their Ethereum um, as a stake, hence the proof of stake. Um, and then the validators can, are, you, get a, you get a consensus from these random validators, you know, 10 or 12, however many it is, five, I think Ethereum's at five now, seven, something like that. Um, then they, they're the ones that say, yes, this is correct, now you can trust that block. So, and that's way less energy intensive because you, you, know, you don't have 800 million people competing to do the, the stupid little math problem in Bitcoin, you know. So, um, and then there's a third one um, called Proof of Assignment, POA. Uh, and that one, not very widely used. And the idea behind that is that you, you have all these little, they call it the internet of things, like your, your refrigerator has a, a chip in it now. Your vacuum cleaner has a chip in it now. Your, you know, your barbecue has a chip in it. You know, and they have, and these chips are actually pretty powerful. They're, you know, they're so cheap to make now that they can put a, you know, the, the, the computer I had as a kid, you know, the, the chips they have now are 7,000 times more powerful than that the computer was. And that's like in my vacuum cleaner, you know? So if those vacuum cleaners can connect to the internet, my barbecue, my refrigerator, my smartphone, I mean, my smartwatch can, can connect to the internet with this little chip and there's computer powder available that's not being used. I'm not vacuuming right now. I'm not using my computer, the chip inside the vacuum cleaner. So that, that computing power can be um, leveraged and used to do the little hash mining, you know, to do some of that, to do some of that math uh, to where the internet of things now can participate in cryptocurrency mining. Uh, again, it's, this is a very small, like a nothing burger, you know, a little small piece of it, but who knows if everyone's, uh, <laughs> if everyone's refrigerator, there, there's, a, there, there's a couple of cryptocurrency projects out there that are leveraging like the internet of things to do uh, proof of work, proof of stake. So anyway, th uh, uh, that, like I said, that's a bunch of technical, it's like jargon, you know, but it's good to know just to kind of have a, kind of a, a good uh, foundation for when you're researching this and learning stuff. So until next time.